Hello everyone. Now I'll discuss question of respiratory system. So we have a 30 year old lady. She complains of nagging dry cough over the last eight weeks. The cough is present during the day as well as it also awakens her at night. But there is no associated shortness of breath, chest pain or wheezing. And in fact, these are the usual problem when the patient has a chest problem. But in this case, there is nothing like this. Patient has a, a significant history of chronic rhinorrhea. Oh, that means the problem is in the nose. And occasional itching skin rash. And chest x-ray is normal. There is no abnormality. One week of treatment with chlorpheniramine maleate significantly improve her symptoms. Decrease in which of the following is most likely responsible for her symptom? Well, the answer is nasal secretion. Why, why this answer? Let's look into detail. Three common causes of chronic nocturnal cough. That means lasting for eight weeks. Upper airway cough syndrome, which is usually due to post-nasal drip. Asthma and gastroesophageal reflux disease. Okay. So let's first talk about option A. So now upper airway cough syndrome, point to be noted, patient has cough, but this is due to upper airway. This is caused by rhinosinus condition. That means the problem are maybe usually in the nose or sinus. Okay, now what are the conditions which can lead to like allergic perineal rhinitis? Non-allergic vasomotor rhinitis, acute nasopharyngitis, sinusitis. So they are the part of so-called rhinosinus conditions. Now cuff is caused by mechanical stimulation of the afferent limb of the cuff reflex in the upper airway in this condition. Okay. So let's talk more about this. Now, based on the history, the patient dry cough is most likely due to post-nasal dip associated with the allergic rhinitis. Why you can say? Because you can confirm diagnosis by improvement of nasal discharge and cough with the use of first generation antihistaminic. Okay, and the patient improved. Now, let's talk more about the drug chlorpheniramine. This is specific H1 receptor antagonist. It reduces the action of histamine on H1 receptor, decreases allergic response. It exhibits anti-inflammatory effect also. So it is an anti-histaminic as well as anti-inflammatory also, blocking histamine release from the mast cells. Okay. Well, now I have one question for you. Stop the video, write down the answer. Tell me which drug in actually we use, especially in asthma, to prevent release of the mediator from the mast cells. And that drug we use as a prophylactic drug in asthma. Stop the video, write down the answer. Well, the answer is sodium chromoglycate. This is a prophylactic drug that we use in asthma to prevent mast cell degranulation. Well, we come back. Now, as far as chlorophenolamine is concerned, it limits the secretory response of inflammatory cytokines. But now I have got a few more questions for you. Cuff's reflex center is present in which part of the brain? And second, cuff reflex involves which cranial nerve as a afferent component? Again, stop the video, write down the answer. Well, so let's talk about cuff reflex. Both, there are sensory and motor F. That means we have a, from the airway, it goes to the brain. This is the afferent and efferent come back again to the chest. So, F, this is the efferent pathway and this is the motor pathway. Efferent is a motor pathway. And this efferent is mainly via vagus nerve. So this is a vagus nerve which is carrying sensation from the airways to the brain. Efferent pathway again, vagus. That means vagus plays a very important role in the cuff reflex. 
in addition to uh, vagus is the efferent pathway, phrenic nerve is there and spinal motor nerve to diaphragm and, and to abdominal muscle, wall and muscle. So you can see we are getting in addition to vagus, other nerves also, especially phrenic and spinal motor, which are going to abdominal wall or the diaphragm. Now, st stimulation of cuff receptor usually occur by dust or other foreign particles. And it is essential by cuff, these things are thrown out of the body before they, they reach the deeper to, to the alveoli. So they are removed by, removed by the cuff. Cuff is a defense mechanism for the airways so that any foreign particle, unwanted particle should go out of the body. Now, I talked to you regarding cuff reflex. I talked to you regarding efferent. Efferent center is in the medulla oblongata. Okay? Medulla oblongata. Well, what about, now let's look into other option. Acid aspiration. Acid reflux can irritate the cuff reflex. Okay. Also a common cause of chronic cuff. Then this is GERD classically. And when we are getting a case of GERD, other than the dietary and lifestyle modification, we use proton pump inhibitor, which will suppress secretion. So definitely antihistaminic is not going to take care of the acid aspiration. Option B and D, uh, airway hyperactivity and bronchial inflammation. In fact, these two are the very important role which, which are involved in the pathophysiology of asthma, which is the cause of chronic dry cuff, especially in the nocturnal, nocturnal cuff. But in addition to that, in addition to that, we have other features also. Now again, I have a question for you. Stop the video, write down the answer. Tell me what the classical triad of asthma. Stop the video, write down the answer in your copy. Well, the triad of asthma is dry cough. Dyspnea. Wheeze. Dry cough is the earliest feature. is the most common presenting feature. And this is the most characteristic feature. So earliest feature, presenting most common presenting feature and the bees is the most characteristic feature. There are three classical types of asthma. So we come back. So now in asthma, it is a variable and recurring symptoms. The most important point about asthma is reversible. It's such an important point. It's one point we differentiate from COPD. In COPD, it is irreversible. Both asthma and COPD are obstructive airway disease, but this is reversible and this is irreversible. Bronchial inflammation and airway hyperactivity play a very important role. And that, due to this reason only, due to this reason only, steroids play a very important role in the management of severe asthma. Now, when we have to give uh, asthma case, empiric therapy, we give steroid. The reason being is it is a reduces airway inflammation. Beta 2 agonists, which dilate the bronchial smooth muscle like albuterol. Antihistaminic have no role to play in the treatment of asthma. Now, next option C is bradycardin production. 5 to 10 percent patient treated with ACEI, like lisinopril. All prills, all prills are ACEI. And this around 20 percent, maybe as high as 20 percent, they develop a dry cuff. 
due to AC inhibition. Now, again a question for you. Stop the video, write down the answer. What is the mechanism of cuff by ACI? By what reason, okay, they are going to induce cuff? Well, they call decrease degradation of bradycardin and substance P. Normally, ACE, they break down bradycardin. Okay, they break down into inactive compound. But as we are using ACI, this breakdown will not be there. And these two things, bradycardin and substance P, they accumulate and they cause the cough. Cough improves only after discontinuation of the drug. Antihistaminic have no role to play. Well, same thing. Look, this is the ACE. Normally, ACE convert bradykinin into inactive compound. But when we give ACEI, and this conversion will not be there, there will be more and more bradykinin and, and as well as substance P. And they, these are the two which irritate the C fibers, irritating fiber, and that's the lethal dry cuff. That's the basic mechanism of how ACI are going to cause dry cuff. Now, little bit more extra knowledge about ACEI side effect. The pneumonic is kept to prill cuff is a very common, very common, most common rather you can say. But this is the most dangerous problem. Dangerous. Pregnancy, there are absolutely contraindicated in pregnancy. We never give because they are going to cause fetal wasting. They are going to cause fetal wasting. Taste changes, rash, fatigue can happen, protein urea can happen. Uh, renal insufficiency, well, again, uh, due to reduction in the BP mainly, increased production. This is a very, very important point. They lead to hyperkalemia. That's one reason they should be contraindicated in chronic renal failure. In chronic renal failure, already hyperkalemia is there. It should not be used. Low BP can induce renal insufficiency because it's an antihypertensive drug. So, pneumonic is captopril. So, golden line to remember, three most common cause of chronic cuff are upper airway cuff syndrome due to post-nasal drip, asthma, GERD. The diagnosis of upper airway dry cuff is confirmed by elimination of nasal discharge and with the use of antihistaminic like chlorpheniramine, if the patient is responses, then we are dealing with post-nasal drip. Thank you very much.